Oh, hey, John here. In this video, I'm going to step you through how to make a page, well, the administration pages that I use and the plugins that I use for a new website. My aim these days is to keep my websites as lean and mean as possible, not use any plugins I don't absolutely need. The pages I make when I kick off are a contact page and a privacy policy page. In order to make a privacy policy page, I use the plugin. Uh, actually, I deleted it because I don't need it, but I'll show you what it is. It's WP Auto Terms, okay? You get that, you can just create a privacy policy page uh, instantly. You fill in a few name of your website, etc., then it creates it automatically. Whether it's going to be sufficient legally, I don't know. Consult your attorney, it's what I use. Next up, contact page. I keep this really simple. I don't use forms because I get spammed to death with the forms. I put contact us via email, cycle, baron, blog, at gmail.com. Yes, I did create a separate Gmail account for this. I keep it that. That's it. I mean, this site is not going to have any traffic for a long time. And even when I do get traffic, very few people, except for people pitching guest posts, come to the contact page. So no need to put a lot of effort into this until I'm hitting some serious traffic numbers. The other page that I would create would be an about page. I will actually put some effort into the about page. I'm not going to do that here. But how you create a page is just go add new, put whatever your title is, about, type it all up here, etc., etc., etc. Now, you may have installed and you're getting a whole different thing uh, showing here in terms of how you add your content. That means you have the Gutenberg editor showing. I put the classic editor plugin on the site because I prefer this type of editor. So you can use that. I'll show you the plugin and it does this and it's a lot easier to use in my view. Both are good though. Okay, so about now I would create a whole about page. I'll just save this as a draft right now. You can save draft. I can publish here. I can change. Uh, so I can schedule it out. A lot of options with this. It's a well, WordPress is the most popular website platform in the world for a reason, and that's because it's good and it's cheap and it's easy to use, relatively easy to use. So those would be my three pages. Now, when I add content such as articles and blog posts, etc., they're going to all be blog posts. I might create a category or two. I'm going to use some tags down the road. All of these things are going to happen in order to build out my site. So now, now here's the trouble when you start off a site. Okay, categories. I don't really know. Thing is, I don't really know how the site's going to evolve. I don't know which sort of, you know, am I going to focus on mountain biking? Am I going to focus on gear? Am I going to focus on kids' bikes? I don't know because, you know, I spend time getting bikes from my kids and so I know all about that too. So I'm not really sure where the focus is. So I'm not going to make any categories right now. In fact, I will publish probably a bunch of posts on categorize. And I know that's not ideal, but I don't know which categories to do until I get some content added to it. The thing is, you don't need to sweat the small stuff when you're starting out. You just need to get some content going and get the site in there. Now, if you know your categories, that's obviously much better. I just don't know. Tags are reserved for much, much later. I can always go back and quickly tag content as I go. I like to use tags methodically and with uh, purpose in mind and that they actually help visitors rather than just randomly crank out tag after tag after tag. So these are my three pages. You definitely want these. You probably want an affiliate disclaimer uh, uh, page on there as well. I can't really tell you what you're going to put in there. That all depends on merchants you work with, etc. But if you're using Amazon, they have a required disclaimer. I actually put that at the top of the sidebar as well as on a page. Plugins. So I have gone through, I have now gone and installed all the plugins that I use on my niche sites. Now, some may be added down the road, but I would really love to try to keep it at this small number of active 13 plugins. That's a fairly small number. These are ones that I absolutely need, and that's it. I hope I don't add to them because this will keep the site lean and mean, which is really nice. Anti-spam B is a replacement for a Kismet, and according to my uh, site speed consultant that I've been working with now for a couple of months, he says this is leaner. Bluehost I'm going to keep because it seemed like they, they offered some nice uh, features there. Maybe I'll find out that this is a really bulky plugin and I should get rid of it. Who knows? I'm not going to worry about it at this stage of the game. Classic Editor, that got rid of that Gutenberg Editor. If you prefer the, the more classic look, you just install that. It's free. Insert Amazon Images. I use this because it embeds Amazon product images into the post very quickly. And it is a paid plugin. It's not very expensive. I recommend it if you're going to use pro Amazon product images. I definitely plan on using Amazon product images in, in this website. There's a lot of, lot of bike and gear I can promote, I can tell you. I, I buy enough of it too, so I know a lot about it. Actually, 
I kind of just came up with this niche just sort of on the fly this morning. I had no intention of doing it, but I, I know I've talked about mountain biking and stuff in the past on Fat Sacks, and so this is actually a blog I'm kind of excited about. Mammoth is a way to import DOCX documents easily. If you get content delivered to you from writers or you write into a DOCX and you want to import it, you got to strip a lot of code out. This does that, it does a nice job. If you're not going to do that, don't include this on here. In fact, for now, I think I'll keep it off there because my content provider, which is Writer Access, does not deliver in DOCX. I've used content providers in the past that did, and that's why I use it. NovaShare is a social media button sharing. You know, you know, blog posts, they have a Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, etc. buttons at the top or bottom or both, and people would share. Okay, NovaShare is a paid option. Okay, so there might be a free option you want. But here's the optimal word, it's lightweight. Again, Site Suite Consultant I'm talking, I've been working with extensively, highly recommends this. Some of these social sharing buttons are very, very bulky and can slow your site down. This one's lightweight, and so I went with it, but it is paid, so if money is tight, just use a free one until you start making tons and tons of money. Perf Matter is a way to uh, optimize the site a little bit. I'm gonna show you that just because you probably aren't, sure maybe what you want to do i'm not 100 percent. i kind of i'm a little bit conservative here i'm not going to strip everything out but i do disable emojis i disable rss feeds i don't need that if you do need rs feeds obviously don't disable that google fonts is a big one disable it because those fonts can really weigh down a site i disable comments i'm not interested in that content here uh limit post revisions normally i'd put five but i'm going to leave a default here because the bluehost plugin is actually doing that in the back end so i don't need it lazy loading i'm going to use a, an additional plugin Plugin that comes with the theme that I'm going to install. That'll be in another video. It has a built-in lazy loading, so I don't need this. Um, yeah, so that's it for that plugin. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, you might be able to check more boxes. Uh, just, you know, be careful when you're doing that. I actually, this one, this is supposed to be very good. I don't, I don't know this specifically, but I know a lot of people say this is important to do. I think I'm going to do that here, but if you have an established site or you got a big site or something, be very careful with this one because I've done this on another site and it's caused some issues. So, you know, these sort of like universal boilerplate ways of optimizing sites, it's not ideal. Ideally is you're going to shovel, shovel, and I mean shovel bags and bags of money on a site speed consultant who's going to customize it based on the plugins you're using and your hosting and everything else. But it's no fun shoveling buckets and buckets of money at something, especially when you're starting out. In fact, please don't. Please, please don't go pay some consultant. You don't need it. You're starting out. Just do the best you can with the least expensive stuff you can. Um, that's how I start out. So I still, new sites. This is a new site. I'm not putting a nickel into the site and still it starts making money. Plugin. The only reason I have these paid plugins is because I have lifetime licenses that I've bought uh, for, you know, I have other sites and so I just buy, you know, unlimited site licenses and so I'm able to put them on here. But seriously, to, to pay for NovaShare proof matters, at the, I don't really think you need to do that at this stage of the game. Uh, Q2, th this is great. This makes, this is free and this makes your widget uh, on the sidebar sticky, which is really nice with ads. Don't put AdSense in there though. Do not put your AdSense code and make it sticky. You will get in trouble with AdSense with the last thing you need. If you use Ezoic, which I recommend once you hit 10,000 page views per month, uh, or any other ad network and you need something sticky or a sign up form, use that. Uh, but just go into the settings, you probably want to adjust these two and take a look at it on both mobile and desktop because you don't want it to overlap your footer. That's why I changed that there. Moving along, I'm trying to just keep this as short as possible, but still explain the plugins I use and why. Moving on, short pixel optimizer. This is awesome. Okay, now it is paid, but this is probably one I would recommend you put, put money in. You buy a number of images, you can optimize. It's actually very reasonably priced. This is not expensive. I, I think I bought 2 million images, which was a miscalculation on my part. It's stupid because like I've got like 1.8 million images. I think I'm set for life with short pixel. Don't buy 2 million of them. Okay, just buy maybe 100 or 200 or something. Uh, but anyways, this is optimized it. You can display your images as WebP. It'll optimize the size of them. Uh, it's, uh, the images are really bulky. If you don't, uh, when I started this, I'm, some of you were probably listening to me and they're like, oh, this is why you even, of course everybody knows to optimize your images. Well, I didn't when I started. I, I, had, I, I literally had some images from Shutterstock that were 5,000 pixels wide, the large download, you don't need those. 
and unoptimized. So it was coming in at like 2.5 megabytes, right? Which is like literally 10 times the size it needed to be. And I had thousands of them. My site was, a, it just was atrocious. Long story short, get short pixel optimizer, optimize your images, size them when you use them too. If you use Shutterstock or, or stock photos, if you get the large or default, they're huge usually, like 5,000 pixels wide. You only need them like 750, 800, 1,000 pixels wide. I usually do 1,000 standard. Table of Contents Plus, this is a great plugin. Play with the settings. It's really easy to use. It's free. Uh, it, it's only if you want a Table of Contents. This is not mandatory. This is optional. I like them. Tiny MC Advanced just gives a, a little bit better of an editor. I'm actually sort of leaning toward not even using this anymore just because I think it definitely slows the site down. Uh, and I don't really know how much benefit I get. WordFence Security, I know this slows the site down. I can tell you my consultant told me it does. He told me it's not a good plugin for that. But it's a lesser of two evils because I've had a site hacked and they injected dozens of outgoing spam links. And it was terrible because I then had to hire WordFence Security to go through and clean them all up. They did a really nice job, by the way, because it's not an easy feat with 5,000 articles. Anyways, it's a lesser of two evils. I really don't want my sites hacked again because that causes more problems. In fact, I got a site de-indexed from Google once because it got hacked with malware. It was a total disaster. I lost a whole month of revenue. Worse than that, I'm freaking out thinking the site's toast forever. Anyways, I got it back into Google. Everything was good. Search engine traffic returned, but it was hacked. So I use it. Yoast SEO is a plugin. I am going to step you through quickly how I set that up. It's pretty pretty straightforward. This is pretty important. This is a bulky one too, uh, but most SEO plugins are. That's the problem. Uh, so it's, I don't know. I use it. If you come up with a better solution, cool. But basic setup is pretty straightforward. You want to, um, I turn anything I don't need, the stuff I don't need. I don't need all these features, so this should hopefully lighten it up. XML sitemap, I do want, I want this, this, I uh, want that. Um, there we go, we'll leave it at that for now. Just to lighten it up a bit. Taking forever to save. You notice it says uh, huge SEO issue blocking. That's because I checked that box that I showed you in a previous video for whether it's indexed in Google. Dashboard. All right. Search appearance. This is where we do most of the work. This is pretty straightforward. Don't sweat this stuff. Just get it done. Site title. I would just put in uh, cycle barren. I just write a quick little thing about what it is. Organization. Organization name. Put the name of the site. When I get it, when I get a logo, I will upload it. I launch these sites without a logo. I don't bother with that stuff. If you want to get a logo, great. I use Fiverr. It costs me like twenty bucks. I get a logo. It's done, and then I add it. But I'm going to deal with that later. I don't really care about that right now. Uh, text a text title is just fine as far as I'm concerned. Content types. Uh, post. Yes, we want them index. Pages. Yes, we want them index. That's it. That's simple. Media, yes. You want to redirect your attachment URL to the attachment itself. Yes, you want to keep that. Taxonomies. All right, I go against the tide here. I index categories. Some people don't. Most people do. Tags. I index. Okay, a lot of people say don't index your tag archive pages. I do. Yes, I'm going to keep it. Formats. Disabled. Oh, last thing. I just saved it. Remove the category prefix. All right, this this is one of these things that you're never going to know what, what to do here until it's too late. <laughs> and I can tell you, and I made the wrong decision on both times. It's not fatal. Don't sweat it, but I'm going to tell you what this does. Okay, we hit our little question mark here. It's going to add, so let's say my category was mountain biking, okay? When I publish a post, let's say I say best mountain bikes for 10-year-olds. Okay, it's going to be under category mountain biking. So I'm going to have... Cyclebaron.com slash mountain biking slash best mountain bikes for 10 year olds. Okay. If I keep this, I'm going to get that. That's going to have the category show up in the URL. If I remove it, what happens is I'm not going to have the category in the URL. It's just going to go cyclebaron.com slash 10 uh, best mountain bikes for 10 year olds. That's what I'm going to get. Most people get rid of the category in the URL. 
But here's where it could, and I operative word is could, and probably unlikely come in handy. If you're ever going to do any Facebook retargeting, and you want to retarget maybe for specific categories on a, on a site, this is actually a pretty easy way to do that, and it works quite well. Um, but that's if you're going to do paid ads down the road, and chances are for a niche site you're not, but if you think you might, this is a, this is a good reason to do that, because you can specify that, that you're going to retarget visitors to only a particular category on your site. For the most part, though, is not this site I doubt I'll ever buy ads for. This is going to be a content in, uh, info site, pure and simple, with affiliate links and some ads. That's it. So uh, I'm going to actually remove it. Lots of decisions to make. It's tough because you don't know. You don't have a crystal ball. And if you're doing for this for the first time, you're probably going crazy wondering, oh, boy, what do I do? The best thing you can do is do the best you can. Don't sweat these small things. Again, this is a small thing. There are workarounds for that. The best thing you can do is focus on publishing really, really good content. That's it. If I could tell you to do one thing, don't worry about all the details. Especially, excuse me, especially don't worry about design stuff. This is taking forever to save. Do not worry about design stuff. I'll say it again. We're going to slam the theme on. I'm going to click a few buttons, get it up and going, and that's it. I'll format a sidebar, and I'm in business. That's it. Uh, normally, I can do this in literally like 45 minutes. I get all this st stuff done. Maybe an hour. I can set up a new site. I don't know why this is taking forever. Come on. Archives disabled. Okay, we finally got it going there. Back to search appearance. Dragging down here. Taxonomies, we did archives disabled. Disabled. Okay, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, you may have multiple authors writing for your site. <coughs> if you want them to show up and search for their name, by all means enable, but I'm not going to, at least for the foreseeable future, maybe later I'll change it. Same with data archives. They just don't need to be included in search in the in the index. And same with special pages like four four. They just don't need to be included. So we're going to not include them. Breadcrumbs. I like breadcrumbs. I use breadcrumbs. If you use the OS SEO, it's pretty easy to do. You do have to, uh, this. I just keep all that default, uh, but you do need to, let's see, there is a link. You, you need to add a piece of PHP insert. Here we go. Let's check. Let's do this properly. I'll show you how to do this. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do this actually. Yeah, see here. This. We've got to take this and we've got to insert this. In the beginning, in, we've got to put this where we want it to show up. Okay, so that means we're going to have to create a child theme, which we'll do with all that, and then we can put it in there. I'll have to, I'll have to, I always forget how this technical stuff works. Um, it's going to vary by theme, though, um, where you put it and how you do it, so you're going to have to maybe figure it yourself out. And again, this is optional. Breadcrumbs are not going to make or break your website. If you want to save this complicated code stuff to later, by all means do so. Okay, that's it. Yoast is set up. Every plugin is set up. My main pages are set up. Next up, we just need to get the theme on. Click a few buttons, get it formatted the way you want to, and we are in business.